Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here, and welcome to Throwback Thursday. Look what we have today. We're in the secret back room of Baxter Cycle, and we've got a 1968 Triumph Daytona. I think they're called a T100R. I think all Daytonas are T100Rs. And uh, well, anyway, so uh, this is a, kind of the beginning of this model, you know, the Daytona model. Really a neat looking thing. We've got some other ones back here. We'll look at those here in a minute. But uh, so this had a 490 cubic centimeter parallel twin engine. Cams are down here, points under that cover. Another cam down there also. Overhead valves. Um, they're supposed to make between 39 and 41 horsepower, something like that. Four speed transmission. All air cooled, of course. This had two Amal carburetors. That was kind of one of their trademarks, is the uh, carburetors. I think they're 26 millimeter air cleaners. You can see, isn't that, isn't that just gorgeous back through there? I just love that. Love the way that kind of thing looks. Absolutely beautiful. Transmission here, shift indicator right there. One, neutral, two, three, four, four speed. Kickstart only, of course. I wonder how these words start. <laughs> anyway, uh, supposed to have a, uh, I think it's supposed to be an eight inch drum on the front. And uh, this is a single leading shoe. I think the later ones had a dual leading shoe. Let's see, is this a Daytona? Yeah, this is a later, this is a 72. And look at that brake, isn't that neat looking? Dual leading shoe, air intake. I don't know if these air intakes actually were, if they worked or if they were cosmetic only. But uh, very interesting looking brake, isn't it? Same thing on that bike. But anyway, the rear one is a uh, supposed to be a seven inch drum. Tires on these are supposed to be uh, eight and a, three and a, Tires on these are supposed to be three and a quarter by 19 on the front and a four by 18 on the back. Nifty. Wheelbase, uh, 53.6 inches is one number I found. That's 1,360 millimeters. And uh, wet weight on these, I found a large number of variants on that. Uh, anywhere from 360 to 380. So let's call it 370. That's about 168 kilograms. And the fuel tank size is supposed to be about uh, 3.7 gallons. wonder if that's every year just uh this year that's about 14 liters by the way and seat heights was supposed to be about uh, 30 30 inches which is uh 762 millimeters but uh let's take a good look at this thing let's just start with the front got boots over the forks telescopic forks i couldn't find a diameter for the tubes drum brakes of course you know i don't know if this is original paint or not check that out a little chrome beauty cover back here of course there's spokes looking into the engine area I just like I said I love this this to me is just art coils are up here points are gonna be under here the fins right there of course um, dry sump this is an oil tank let's open that up underneath here is room for that oh, looks like electronics solenoid battery old seat cover just a isn't that pretty? Just how they built them back in the day. Oh, one thing I want to look at real quick. Okay, undo this bolt to get the tank off. Petcock on each side. One for each. Each carburetor. I wonder. No, they don't share. Very good. Anyway, pea shooter mufflers. Center stand, of course. These old bikes always had center stands. I don't see blinkers on this one. Metal fenders, of course. Let's walk around to the other side. Tank rubber. Yeah, it says Triumph on there even. Got these big badges on here. Chrome strip down the center. Gorgeous. The brake mechanism, of course. Mechanical brake. You know, push rod actuated. I mean, look at that. Fulcrum point right here. Just gorgeous. I just love this kind of thing. When I was a little kid, I used to pine over this kind of thing. I think that's why it grabs me so much. Oh, so has the original reflectors. That's something that gets thrown off a lot of times. Beautiful, beautiful shocks right there. Um, jumping up here, twin gauges. Tack on this side. Speedometer, this one says uh, 10,300. Who knows if that's accurate or not. But aren't those just gorgeous looking gauges? Steering wheel lock. Uh, ammeter up here. The uh, 
I think one of these is oil pressure, the other one is probably a neutral light. Let's see if I can turn a key on. Yeah, nothing happens. Anyway, just a beautiful little bike. Chrome bucket for the headlight, chrome rim. Just gorgeous on the front end, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. Coming over to the controls. Uh, headlight switch is here, so they usually had it off, daytime, and then headlight on. When you had it on headlight on, this is usually your high-low over here. At your, at your horn, the horn works. Choke on this side, throttle of course. Clutch and mechanical brake. You know, you can see the mechanical brake all the way down there. Just uh, And this is choke right here, by the way. But uh, just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> Even has a mirror. And of course these barrel shaped grips, I just love that. So I've got a T100 of my own, a 2012 I believe. And when I look at this motorcycle, I see a lot of that bike in it. I can see a lot of the heritage that they've transferred over. And I'll talk about that. Um, I see it in the tank shape and badging. I see it in the handlebars. I see it in the gauges for sure. I've got almost identical looking gauges. Um, I certainly see it in the engine as far as a parallel twin with the pipes, you know, jetting out sideways like this. And uh, I also see it in the mufflers. I've got pea shooters on mine. Mine have the kink. They call it the kink where it kinks up and over. The newer T100s, they got rid of that kink or at least alleviated it. And I also see it in the front fenders. Mine's got the, uh, or in the front, mine's got the, uh, these things on there. Very good looking motorcycle. Very good looking motorcycle. Um, I think there used to be one, some of these will have a little oil pressure indicator, but uh, I don't think that's what that is. Anyway, just a gorgeous bike. Gorgeous bike. Oh, let's look at this real quick. There's the oil filler right there. So the oil comes in from the engine into there. Probably goes out the bottom right here, into the engine again. So dry sump bike. Love it, love it. Uh, let's look at this one real quick over here. This is a, uh, it says it's a 72. And uh, there are some styling differences in the tank, the paint of course, the badges are different. All this looks about the same, but the brake is the big thing here. Check out this brake. You know, it's got the dual leading shoe where this one has a single leading shoe over here. Put the dual leading shoe with the, uh, I think we showed this already, the intake. Like I said, I don't know if those intakes are actual or if they're plugged up, you know. I know the racing bikes, they opened them up, but I don't know if they did them on these. This is a, uh, well, that's a Daytona also. Oh, here's a trophy over here. Check that out. And the neat thing about the trophy, and this one anyway, is see how the pipes are? Hey, you know what? Let's stay focused here, guys. <laughs> it's, so, it's easy to get carried away, especially in this room. But uh, anyway, that is our hot rod of the day. Baxter Cycle, BaxterCycle.com. If you're interested in anything like this, you know, everybody should get to this room at least once in their life. If you like British motorcycles, this is the room to see. It's really quite a place. Someday we'll do a video on those triples back there. They were race bikes. Anyway, thanks for watching Throwback Thursday. If you have any questions about any of these motorcycles in here, get a hold of uh, Randy at BaxterCycle.com. Tell him Fuzzy Biker sent you. Now get out there and ride. Wahoo!